What's up guys? My name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since our last build video and I'm excited to show you guys the new Vampire Spell Sword build. Now before you run away at the sound of being a vampire in Skyrim, hold on just a moment because this build really helps mitigate all of those really annoying vampire traits. The concept of this build is to create the best setup for your character and this is going to be the human half of the vampire build. I'm going to do another video covering the vampire lord half. The concept of the human half of this build is to make a powerful spell sword character who can regenerate magicka even in the daytime, ready for your use when you turn into the vampire lord. It's going to be a really very effective setup for your transformation. And just so you guys know, if you haven't seen one of my build guides before, I've already made lots of different guides on how to get all the equipment that you need for this build and I've linked them all down below in the description. That also includes guides on the fastest way to level up your skills or where to find the unique weapons we'll be using. My guides can be quite long and intensive so I do suggest favouriting this video so you can easily come back to it in the future. Before we talk about the character setup though, let me tell you about the character's backstory. This is going to be more for those people who like roleplaying, so if you don't like it, you can just skip past this section. You play as Sen. Some 200 years ago, Sen was a battle mage in the Imperial Court and was chosen to be among the founding members of the Vigilant of Stendhal, a military organisation sworn to combat the Daedric outbreak in Cyrodiil during the Oblivion Crisis. As a follower of Stendar, you sought to vanquish any and all vampires, werewolves and witches from the face of Tamriel. During the Battle of Kavat, you were captured by a group of vampiric cultists named the Schema Princesses, a band of witches. One stormy night, you were forced against your will to undergo an ancient ritual with Morlag Bao, the Daedric Prince of Domination and the creator of the first pure-blood vampire. You didn't stand a chance. You remember nothing of the blood and slaughter of that night that followed, apart from awakening in a pool of blood to hundreds of mutilated cultists that surrounded you. You have been reborn again in the blood of your enemies. 200 years onwards from that night, your journey has taken you this far, to Skyrim. Very few pure blood vampires exist in Skyrim, in fact, there are only three of notable existence before yourself. But now it's up to you to decide where your loyalty truly lies. Will you side with the Dawnguard and fight your very existence? Or truly embrace who you have become? And that is the backstory. I hope you found that interesting. But now let's talk about our sword. Because we will be using Harkon Sword, a legendary vampiric artifact which has an enchantment that can only be used by vampires. This sword has a base damage of 8, but can be upgraded as a grindstone to ridiculous amounts if you want to. Just check out my sword upgrade guide down below in the description. It is quite overpowered and you don't need to do it, but you can if you like. Anyway, the true point of this sword and why we're actually using it is its enchantment. With every hit of this sword, you'll absorb 15 magicka, stamina and health. So with this in mind, this sword actually does 23 damage a hit, which is way more than a dragonbone sword, making it really quite powerful. And because you're absorbing health, you don't need a shield. So now you've freed up your other hand for casting destruction spells, which you know and love. The sword attacks are mainly just to keep you alive and regenerate magicka, and I'll also be showing you how to make the enchantment on this sword unlimited later on in the guide. It's also important to note that this sword is insane for a vampire, because usually during the daytime, your stamina, health and magicka regeneration are halved. So with this sword, you literally ignore those effects. Roleplay wise, it kind of encourages you to feed off your enemy's life sources during the daytime to keep yourself more powerful, and I really like that idea. So let's start with the least important skill for this build, which is the one-handed skill. Because you can, if you like, play this build without getting any perks in this skill tree. But if you do get perks, 
you will end up doing more damage with Harken Sword. So for the sake of doing more damage, we'll need to invest in the Armsman perk, which makes you do twice as much damage with swords. We're going to ignore the Blazeman perk due to how critical damage is calculated in Skyrim, this perk is actually really not worth it. Instead we're going to get the Fighting Stance perk. This just reduces the cost of power attacks by 25%. And then if you get the Savage Strike perk, this will make the standing power attacks do 25% more damage and also give you some awesome kill cam executions. Next up we're going to get the critical charge perk, which doesn't really do that much more damage but it's very useful for closing the distance between you and the enemy and it also looks really damn cool. Lastly guys, you're going to want to get the paralyzing strike perk. This makes it so your backwards power attacks have a 25% chance of paralyzing your foes. It is situational but I do find it very useful with this build. Because while casting spells in one hand, if you backtrack and power attack any enemies coming towards you, you will have to time this right, but as you can see you can paralyze them and just carry on draining their health or casting destruction spells at them. It's a very good defensive offensive skill. Now let's talk about the enchanting skill. If you use the enchanting skill, you'll need enchanting level 100 but you do not require level 100 enchanting to play this build. The only thing level 100 enchanting will allow you to do is reduce the magicka cost of casting destruction spells by 100%. This will mean that your destruction spells will no longer cost any magicka to cast. And there's also a hidden effect where Harken Sword will now have unlimited enchantment, so you can use it repeatedly without having to recharge it ever again which is amazing. And as I said before guys, I've got a guide in the description on the fastest way to level up your enchanting skill. But you'll only need to invest five points in the enchanter perk. This will make your enchantments twice as strong. And you will also need the insightful enchanter perk as well. And that's all you need. But I also suggest getting the twin enchanter perk, as this one allows you to add two enchantments onto your armor and weapons instead of one. And that's hugely beneficial and this perk is one of the best perks in the game. So I recommend you get that as well, though you don't need it. So after you've done that, all you need to do now is find the enchantment which makes destruction spells cost percentage less to cast. And you can get that very easily as soon as you start the game if you check out my guide in the description. Once you've got an item with that enchantment on, we're just going to take it over to Dragon Reach in the city of Whiterun. There's an enchanting altar in this area that we can use to learn its enchantment. So once you've learned the enchantment, we're going to enchant a ring, a necklace, a helmet, and finally a piece of body armor. With the destruction spells cost 25% less to cast. Now when you wear all of these pieces of armor, once we're done enchanting them, you'll be able to cast destruction spells for free. And you'll also have unlimited sword enchantment as well. And if you got the twin enchanter perk that I mentioned earlier, you can also enchant your armor with a secondary effect that increases your health or your magicka as well. Personally, I'm going to be increasing my magicka. In total, I will have an additional 248 magicka now. I'm also enchanting my gauntlets with plus 40% more one-handed damage and my boots with plus 37% resistance to fire to help mitigate our weakness to fire. And lastly, for the torso, I'm going to have two enchantments that give me a total of 40% cheaper to cast destruction spells and it also makes my magicka regeneration 10% faster. Now, some of you may be wondering why I've done that because now I actually have 115% reduction to destruction spells magicka cost, but that will become clearer later on in the video. You may think that unlimited destruction spells are overpowered, but remember that when you turn into a vampire lord, you actually unequip all of your items, so you no longer have unlimited destruction casting, 
And the idea of this build is that you turn into a vampire lord and then when you run out of magicka, you turn back and regenerate it all using Harkon's sword. And then you go back into the vampire lord form. So this character is all about having lots and lots of magicka so you can cast tons of spells when you're in vampire lord and then regenerating it as fast as possible. So, okay, let's talk about our destruction spells, our main source of damage output, and the most important skill tree, actually. The destruction skill tree will dictate what spells you use. As you level up, you're going to want to get the Novice, Apprentice, and then Adept perks. Now, I don't really recommend it, but you can also get the Expert and Master level destruction spell perks as well. This basically reduces the magicka cost of those spells. But the reason why I say you probably don't need the expert or master level ones is because usually you'll mainly be using adept level destruction spells. By the time you get to expert ones you'll probably have unlimited magicka so they become less useful. But it's up to you. We're then going to want to get the dual casting perk and then the impact perk. The impact perk is probably the best perk in the entire game because when dual casting spells you'll now be able to stagger foes every single hit. This is going to be how you deal with giants and dragons without getting killed at lower levels. Remember you're a vampire so you're weak to fire dragons. But now as you can see I can keep on staggering these larger foes and they literally can't do anything to me so it's super powerful. It's up to you which school of magic you go for, but I suggest you only specialise in one school. Personally, I'm going to be specialising in the fire school, so I'm going to get all the fire related perks. This allows me to slowly whittle down my enemies while I keep on healing myself using Harkon's sword. I'd say the second best option is shock spells, because very few enemies in Skyrim have a resistance to shock. As for the spells you'll be using, it's rather straightforward. As you find spells and they're more powerful, just use whatever you feel like. Though if like me you have specialised in fire magic, you may want to check out my guide on how to do over 3000 damage with fire spells. Take care of those flames. Anyway, while fighting, if you become low on health, you can always swap to your drain life spell, which every single vampire has and then just backpedal while using your backwards power attack to paralyse oncoming enemies. I usually find this gets me out of any tight spots. Now let's talk about attributes. Stamina is literally useless to you now. You probably won't really be using it that much. You can pretty much travel everywhere as a vampire lord and just use the bats ability to get around super fast. So I suggest putting all of your attributes evenly between health and magicka and once you feel like you have enough health just put the rest in magicka. Stamina is mainly just going to be used for getting around and travelling places. Next though let's talk about armour. You can be successful using both heavy armour and light armour. To be honest it doesn't really matter too much because both can be upgraded to reach the damage resistance cap of 80% physical damage resistance which you'll have when you get to about 500-ish armour. So you can either go for ebony armour which can be found at level 30 if you check out the link in the description or like me you can go for dragon plate or dragon scale armour because I thought it really suited the undead vampire theme pretty well. As for shouts, this build really doesn't need shouts but obviously you can use whatever shouts you feel fit this build and whatever you're comfortable with. I don't think it's worth me going over every single shout, but I will link a few in the description that I think are going to be useful if you're struggling. And lastly, let's talk about our race and our standing stone. I'm actually going to be using a Dark Elf because it fits the backstory of the build and I also think Dark Elves look pretty awesome. Not to mention having a 50% resistance to fire already, so you already don't get any of the negatives for being a vampire. And you also start with plus 10 destruction, which is useful. But now, when we get our standing stone, guys, I suggest using the Lord Stone, which is located just here on the map. That will give you plus 25% resistance to magic. So now, you'll have 25% resistance to fire, despite being a vampire, and you'll also have a 75% resistance to frost. 
which is really good because most enemies in Skyrim will use frost damage. Alternatively though, you can also use the Atronox Stone, which is located just here on the map. I suggest using this one if you want a bit more of a challenging style of gameplay. This gives you another plus 50 more Magicka, as well as 50% spell absorption. So now, you'll have basically a 75% resistance to fire, and you'll be pretty much immune to frost damage. The drawback is that your Magicka will regenerate 50% slower. But that doesn't actually really matter too much because you have Hark and Sword to regenerate it. So it's a pretty powerful combo. So okay, now we've finished the human part of this build. You can go ahead and watch the vampire half of the build, which I've linked down below in the description. But before you go, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell icon next to the subscription button. And this will ensure that YouTube notifies you whenever I've got a new Skyrim guide for you guys to watch. And if you'd also like to support the channel further, please also consider supporting my content on Patreon, which is also linked down below in the description. These videos do take a lot of time, I put a lot of effort into playtesting them and making sure they work with all the aspects of the game, and also making sure they're interesting and fun. So your financial support on Patreon really does help this kind of content, so I really appreciate your help with that guys. But thanks again for watching me ESO, I hope you have a lot of fun with this vampire setup guys, and I will see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day, and goodbye. You contracted a disease, perhaps, but you are no true vampire. Behold the power! This is the power that I offer. Now, make your choice.